So if you clicked on this video, you have probably have an idea of what a drone is and you've probably done some research on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now this video, I am gonna be going over the specs and capabilities of the drone, but I really wanna hone in on why this drone is so special to me and the experience I had when I traveled abroad. And I think a lot of times people forget the experience is the most important part of buying anything. You don't wanna get lost in the details and the specs. What you really wanna know is, is this drone gonna make my life better and will I be able to capture those moments when I need to? We'll talk about that in that video today. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Emmanuel Tall. I do weekly videos on tech and product related stuff. And today we'll be looking at the DJI Mini 3 Pro. We're gonna go into the specs, we're gonna go into details, we're gonna look at the example video, we're gonna look at how it's controlled and some of the tips and tricks into flying a drone if you've never done so. And if you like this content and if you found this video helpful in the end, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. So at the very beginning, I wanna start talking about the drone weight. The drone of this Mini 3 Pro is actually 249 grams. That is a key number because in most countries, you can operate a drone under 250 grams without needing a license. So that's most North American countries as well as Western European countries. Always check your local authorities to make sure that's the case. So there is no barrier in terms of certifications for this drone, so consumers and professionals can fly this. So the first thing on the drone that I wanna really touch on is the sensor. And it is an improved sensor from the previous generation. It is now a one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor, which is significantly larger than the one over 2.3. In plain terms, that means this can capture more light and detail. You also now have a 48 megapixel sensor. So 48 megapixel still images when you're trying to capture the landscape and trying to take as much detail as possible. And the best thing is you can save those files in RAW. So you can go into Lightroom, Photoshop, or any other photo editing and adjust the details without losing the integrity of that file. Now, in terms of video, you get 4K at 60 FPS, which is absolutely phenomenal. And you also get slow motion at 1080p at 120 FPS. So this is a great drone for even action-packed filming, or if you just wanna film landscape scenery, you get that cinematic look or you get that professional sport look, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful using this drone. And for those of you who are in the professional realm of video making and video editing, you do get to capture video in DJI Cine-like. So that is the flat profile. So if you wanna adjust the colors and do color grading after that, you can capture in flat and adjust afterwards. So lots of detail captured and not a lot of detail loss, which is absolutely incredible. So the drone itself is actually quite compact. As you can see, it sits in my hand and the wings open up very easily just by adjusting them and pulling them out. So if you are traveling with a drone like this, this is as compact as a DSLR camera. It can slip right into a backpack without any issue. And it does come with a case to cover the gimbal so you don't scratch it or lose it. Very, very convenient. And I know a lot of people have questions on whether or not you can travel with this. You absolutely can. I had no issues traveling, going through security through TSA and through Canadian customs. Now, another neat feature that DJI did this year is that they improved the ND filters and how to remove and replace them on the sensor itself. Removing them and putting them have never been easier and they're much more secure than they were last year. Last year, they clipped on to the sensor. This year, they actually fixed tight. So it's very, very convenient. And if you get the Pro Bundle with the extra batteries, it does come with the ND filter. So if you like shooting in absolute manual mode with a fixed frame rate and manual ISO, ND filters are a must if you wanna capture that cinematic shot of any landscape you're trying to shoot. Now, of course, if you wanna save any of the video that you're shooting or capture any images, you will need to purchase a micro SD card and it goes right at the rear of the drone here. So the internal storage is only two gigabytes of the drone. Um, if you're shooting at 4K or if you're capturing very high quality images, you're gonna fill that up really quick. So I do recommend going with at least 128 gigabytes to make sure that you have enough space throughout your entire journey, and it can be easily replaced with another micro SD. And like I said, it goes right here, flips in, easy to access and easy to remove. And thank you for NordPass for sponsoring this video. Do you have multiple accounts, multiple team members in your business, and you're always worrying about keeping passwords and your account safe? Well, with NordPass, you don't have to worry about that anymore. NordPass Business eases the burden of access for business accounts, making it possible for you and your team to work across apps uninterrupted, all while providing the highest standard of cybersecure technology. With NordPass Business, you can forget about account resets because all your credentials are saved in one secure place with just a click. Logging into accounts is seamless. Usernames and passwords will automatically populate into login fields whenever you need them. Payments and purchases also couldn't be any easier with NordPass. 
NordPass lets you keep unlimited number of payment details close at hand and offers a simple and secure way to share the information with teammates and the whole department on demand. Autofill works on payments information too. Once stored, the information is pulled and populated into forms instantly, saving valuable time of tedious manual entry. On top of all that, NordPass offers valuable tools like a password generator and password health check, so you don't have to worry about generating a secure password and worrying about not being secure. So see NordPass business in action by clicking the link in the description below and using promo code ManualToll for free three month access. So next up, we're gonna talk about the controller and this is what it looks like. You're probably wondering, wait a minute, where's the screen? I thought the DJI Mini 3 Pro had a screen and controller. And you're correct, but it also comes with last generation's controller and it is compatible with it. Now, the reason why I like this controller is two. It's cheaper and you get better battery life. So I took this on a trip to Portugal and I got over five and a half hours of flight time with video recording and I didn't even have to charge this once. It's very, very good on battery. And the other thing is that the brightness on the screen of the one with the built-in onto the controller is not as much as a typical smartphone. So my iPhone goes up to 800 nits of brightness. A lot of Samsung and Android phones go up to a thousand, whereas that controller is quite restricted. So when you're filming in sunlight, uh, just take that into consideration. The other thing is, is that I'm able to record the screen on my iPhone as I'm also recording video on my drone. So if I want to do an overlay or if I just want to capture what I'm recording immediately on my iPhone or Android, I can do that. You cannot do that on the controller with the built-in screen. So it's more of a preference. Um, I do know that the range is slightly improved with the newer controller, but honestly, I have not had any satellite or radio issues communicating with the drone with this controller. So take that how you will, but this is my recommendation for you guys. So on the controller immediately, you get three functions. You get cine-like, so that's for slower, more detailed tracking of drone. You have normal mode, and then you have sport mode where you're just relying on speed and unlimited range. You also have the removable thumbsticks that stay at the bottom, so they don't stick out and you don't have to worry about them falling or ruining the analog sticks when you're packing this on the go. And then of course you have trigger buttons on the rear. So this is for recording as well as a uh, scroll wheel to adjust the gimbal and best case is this is where your iPhone or Android phone will go and it comes with removable cables over here so here you can adjust it for even a lightning or a USB-C which is all included in the box so that's very very convenient if you guys were wondering that you don't have to purchase any additional cables. So next I want to touch about the range and battery life on the drone. So let's talk about altitude first. With the standard battery, you can go up to 4,000 meters above sea level, which is four kilometers, which is <laughs> crazy high. And you can also go up to 18 kilometers in distance, assuming that there are no winds. Remember, battery life is always determined in best case scenario. So right now, what DJI has on their website is 34 minutes of flight time, but that's 34 minutes if there's absolutely no wind. Now, in real world conditions, you're always going to have some sort of wind and the drone will always fight to stay still. And of course, when it's fighting and stabilizing itself is using up more battery. Realistically, I've gotten anywhere between 15 and 25 minutes of flying time. In Portugal, it was very windy. So uh, flight time was a lot lower. But in North America here in uh, southern Ontario, winds aren't as bad. So you're looking at around the 25 minute mark time per battery. I do recommend getting a second battery uh, with the drone and carrying it around with you because charging the battery can take up to an hour sometimes with fast charging. Being easy, being able to easily swap batteries is very clutch in moments where you wanna capture the right moment and you won't want a battery to restrict you in doing that. So um, you can get the upgraded battery, that is the Flight Plus, but the battery weighs more than the standard battery and that takes your weight of the drone so total capacity above 249 grams so at that point you will need a special permit to fly a drone so keep that in mind when purchasing that special battery so i want to touch on some of the cool features that have been added to the mini 3 pro and the first one is the tri-directional sensing so that means there are now sensors at the top here as you can see and you also have sensors at the bottom and what these do is they'll let you know if you're coming close to an object it will either break or it will maneuver around. So I've seen so many videos, especially of the older generation drones, just flying into an object that could have been avoided, or sometimes you just miss because the perspective in a drone so far above, you can't really tell. 
With this, it will automatically break or maneuver depending on how you set the settings. I prefer breaking, but that is totally a preference on how you want to do it. So this is very clutch. The only thing I will say is that there are no sensors on the side. So when you are strafing the drone, you still have to be super careful and mindful of your surroundings because <laughs> I will admit it, I have accidentally crashed this drone uh, trying to fight seagulls in Portugal. So hopefully you don't run into the same mistake. And for all you content creators out there, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, and Instagram, you now have vertical video. So check this out. The sensor can actually tilt and you'll get 4K vertical video exported directly out of here. So no modifications required to be made in post. So that is super clutch. So if you're out and about, you're on a trip, you wanna shoot some video for your phone, you wanna post it on your socials, it can be extracted quite easily and filmed right on the drone. All you have to do is click on a single button on the controller when you're flying it, and it will automatically adjust the sensor to turn into vertical video. Super clutch. In the old drones, you have to modify it in post, and you would lose a lot of the image when you crop the image to a vertical 4K. Here you get true native 4K. So for all you content creators, you finally got what you wish for. And another feature that makes its return is focus track and active track. So on your phone or on the screen of the controller, if you have that one, you can actually draw an area where you'd like to keep the gimbal focused on and you can walk around and the drone will either pan or it will actually follow you. So if you want to take cool shots of like a drone following you while you're driving a car, please do that safely or just following you in general. Or if you want to take a group shot and you want everyone to be in focus, you can do that right off the controller. So it is super cool and it's actually kind of a cool party trick but uh, I use it sparingly. Um, like I said, always make sure that you are aware of your surrounding environment. Because like I said, there are no sensors on the side and the drone will always be foot facing you. So if you're around trees or you're in a crowded area, please, please, please be cognizant of your surrounding environment. Now, for those who have decided to purchase this drone or have recently purchased this drone, I do have some tips and tricks for you. Some of these tips that have not been shown in other videos. Tip number one, be careful of birds, especially seagulls in an urban core. Um, for some reason, seagulls take this drone to be a predator and they will attack it in, in, in the air. And it's happened to me in Portugal and it's happened to me in North America as well. So please be cognizant of that, especially geese. Uh, if you're Canadian, Canadian geese are wild animals. Just don't even go near them, period. So be careful of the wildlife in the area. Not only of being careful of flying into wildlife, but be cognizant of that wildlife will attack the drone. Now, this is not necessarily the case everywhere. I've been in rural settings. I've been in Madeira. Madeira, the birds are a lot more relaxed, so I didn't run into the same issue, but just keep this in mind when flying in urban areas. Tip number two, start flying in an open field and always have direct visual contact with the drone and the controller. So the way that the controller works is it captures its location via satellite and it actually sends radio signals to the drone. So if you're obstructed by a building or a mountain, you will start losing signal. So always have direct contact with the drone. This is very helpful if you're in an area where you are in multiple situations of buildings or mountains and escarpments, you may run into this issue. So pre-planning your flight is always the best way to mitigate issues in the air. And my biggest tip here is avoid power lines. So electrical lines, um, for some reason, when you're nearby, they do obstruct the signal. And of course, the worst case scenario is you do not want to crash into a power line and cause a power outage in your neighborhood or any other major city you're in. So just avoid them altogether. They're, they're no good. Um, bad, bad, bad. So stay away. Open fields, um, rural environments are honestly the best place to fly the drone. And of course, look into local laws. Uh, specific municipalities and provinces and states have rules and regulations. For example, you can't fly over a roadway and you can't fly over a crowd of people just for safety reasons. But like I said, check your local authorities for all these laws and regulations before you fly for the first time. And that is it for the video today, guys. I hope you found it helpful. You can actually find the unboxing of the drone over here. And remember to use promo code MANUERTOL for a free three-month trial of NordPass. That's it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.